me personally, having been in the cryptocurrency space since 2013, I've seen Bitcoin, you know, rise and die uh, at least seven times now, right? And, and I'm quantifying that by headlines, right? Every time that it goes up, it's an amazing miracle. And every time it goes down more than 30%, it's dead, right? Um, yet here we are with it still being more valuable than it's ever been. Welcome to NEI 500 CEO interview series, where we cover up and coming small cap stocks on the TSX Venture Exchange, the Canadian Security Exchange, NASDAQ, and OTC markets. We are excited today to present one of the most exciting blockchain companies on the CSE, Blockchain Foundry, ticker symbol BCFN. We interviewed Dan Wesluck, CEO of the company. NAI 500 has been covering Blockchain Foundry for over a year, and since then, the company has advanced its business to include not only blockchain development services, but also development of blockchain-based solutions. Some key highlights of BCFN include, the company recently announced a wide range of new products under development, including its new BCF wallet, a notary compliance product, and a Canadian US dollar stablecoin. The company also continues to service enterprise level clients in developing their own blockchain solutions. And lastly, its previous clients include large Canadian financial institutions. Please like our video and subscribe to our channel. It really helps us to get more cutting edge content to you, the viewers. Hi, Dan. Great to have you today. Hey, Phil. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so we're excited to talk to you today because, you know, the crypto market has had a very intense couple of weeks. And uh, what do you see as the biggest takeaways from the recent swings in Bitcoin, Ethereum, and the other uh, digital assets that are being traded today? You know, it's been interesting because in the past couple of weeks, we've seen sort of regulatory, what you could kind of categorize as regulatory actions being taken by both India and China. And we've seen large sort of market movements as a result of those uh, uh, opinions being handed down. Now, what's interesting is that, you know, uh, within the last three months, India sort of flat out banned crypto. And then just within the last week or so, they, um, they backpedaled a bit on that opinion. Um, China themselves has their own CBDC, which they have an interest in, um, you know, carving out a market for. And so I think that's what's driving their, um, their sort of opinion on, on Bitcoin and financial institutions um, in their jurisdiction working with cryptocurrency. And so, you know, overall, I really think that what it means for the industry is just that, you know, regulation and compliance is, is coming for the space, which I personally think, and also, you know, speaking for BCF, it, we think that's a great thing because that means that more both institutional and retail investors can participate in the space knowing that it's being um, you know, secured and monitored by the appropriate bodies so that their investment is safe. Um, and so I think it's a great thing. I just think it's an indication that the industry needs more tools to help deal with these sort of regulatory and compliance challenges. And that's a big focus of what Blockchain Foundry is working on this year. Well, that's good. And in May, you actually announced that one of your key strategies for 2021 would be to launch a proprietary BCF wallet for holding Syscoin assets, as well as Ethereum-based tokens and Bitcoin. Now, right. what is the impact of this wallet for your revenues? Yeah, so for our revenues, it's gonna, it's gonna have, it'll start generating material revenue for our company simply as a home base for users to interact with different services that we plan to provide, ranging from you know, swap as a service, which is kind of a way to trade different digital assets without having to go out to an exchange, all the way up to cross-chain bridging and uh, even uh, stable coins that our company may bring to market as well. Now, another key point to make about the wallet is while it does provide access to all of these great services that we'll be bringing to the market and those services generate revenue for Blockchain Foundry, um, the wallet is also a key infrastructural piece for uh, the Syscoin ecosystem and the larger regulatory compliant token ecosystem. Our wallet will be uh, specifically catering towards um, not only the types of use cases that tokens see today, like your standard holding and, and transmitting Ethereum, ERC-20, Syscoin, NFTs, Bitcoin, all of those things, but it will also be uh, a particularly key piece of infrastructure for um, different sorts of NFT marketplaces we plan to roll out over the coming um, year and different types of regulatory products that we have both for token issuers and just for standard 
organizations like ourselves that may hold crypto on the books and have to deal with the challenges of auditing and reporting on that crypto, um, we're developing tooling for them as well. So the wallet will be key to interacting with that tooling. It will, of course, provide value to regular retail customers and BCF will be generating revenue off of them. Um, but at the same time, really the, the bigger play and the more critical role of the wallet is an infrastructural piece to interact with some of our uh, compliance and auditing products. Very good. So you also showcased a large array of related applications, such as the crossing bridge and the notary slash compliance application you just mentioned. So how do you, how do these applications fit into the blockchain development business that your that services the corporate and enterprise clients that you've worked with in the past? Yeah. So you know these products that we're developing are actually a direct result of needs that we've seen through our consulting and development service. Right. We work with a lot. We work with a wide spectrum of different blockchain use cases from uh, token issuers developing stable coins to uh, organizations working on private permission to blockchains, developing things like uh, identity solutions based on self-sovereign identity. Uh, and through the course of that work, we've realized certain pain points in the market, both for token issuers and for organizations that just hold cryptocurrency on their books. And so that's where the need for these products is coming from. Um, and we actually already have customers waiting in the wings for these products. Uh, and now that we've raised funds recently in March, we raised $10 million uh, Canadian, which will help us to operationalize those product plans and really catalyze bringing those products to market so that we can help token issuers and organizations with cryptocurrency on the books um, better manage those processes uh, with lower cost overhead. Um, and really simplifying the process, both for organizations and for auditors and regulators. Good. And we also saw your net income and total comprehensive income grow to over 1 million in the first three months of 2021, mainly from digital currencies. Uh, tell us more about where that income came from, and also if that income is going to be reinvested into the cryptocurrency market. Yeah, so you know, as a company, we um, participate in the protocol development of a blockchain called Syscoin, which we were also uh, many of our team were founding team members of back in 2013, and we have reinvested some of our recent raise into Syscoin, um, and Syscoin has performed well on the back of those investments. Um, we also are building different products and and applications on top of the Syscoin blockchain due to the unique um, uh, due to the unique value propositions that it provides uh, versus other blockchains. And so, you know, as we further develop our auditing and compliance solutions, as well as develop out the wallet infrastructure and different NFT marketplaces around that, we feel that, um, you know, there's a likelihood that the value of the token may go up. And so, um, you know, we've made some strategic investments there. At the same time, because Syscoin has the concept of masternodes, we're able to take that investment of Syscoin, put it into master nodes, which actually generate, uh, you know, between eight and 15% uh, return on investment in Syscoin per year. And so currently the strategy with that cryptocurrency is to reinvest it into master nodes. Um, and at the same time, we're exploring, um, we're always watching the sort of cryptocurrency landscape. And so, um, you know, if there are other uh, nascent tokens that we feel might be, um, you know, uh, worth investing in, we'll certainly explore those. But right now, Syscoin is our focus in terms of digital asset investments. And we've put most of that back into masternodes, which, as you've seen on our financial sheets, help generate further revenue for the company. Not only that, but you guys are uniquely positioned to discover and invest in other digital assets. Will we see a growth in this part of your business moving forward? Um, there's a potential for that. That's certainly something that we are not um, ruling out. Uh, we are actually on the precipice of launching a new version of our website, which also includes a unique accelerator program that we'll be offering to different sort of uh, digital asset based initiatives that are looking for help getting their project off of the ground. We have a framework for evaluating, um, you know, different aspects of those projects for uh, likelihood of success, so to speak. And based on those evaluations, we may take an active role in helping to, um, you know, develop and bring the vision of those products to market, uh, while at the same time taking an active 
sort of equity uh, position in those projects to create alignment between our business and you know making them successful. That 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 initiative is very nascent and and you know just launching here um, in the next week, right? And so I expect it to probably be a few months before we see anything material coming out of it. Um, but that's just to say that we're certainly keeping the door open to those types of opportunities and even have started to structure a formal program to better evaluate and um, select different opportunities in that area. I had just one last question, and it really comes from the fact that we are, most of our viewers and our readers are traditional capital market investors. Mm -hmm. um, since we saw so many swings in the market in the last couple of months, uh, some of them have asked, is the crypto market a DeFi market? Is that a bubble? And is this going to last a long time? So what do you have to say about that? I definitely think it's not a bubble. I think that there are going to be swings and that's normal. You know, like me personally, having been in the cryptocurrency space since 2013, I've seen Bitcoin, you know, rise and die uh, at least seven times now. Right. And, and I'm quantifying that by headlines. Right. Every time that it goes up, it's an amazing miracle. And every time it goes down more than 30 percent, it's dead. Right. Um, yet here we are with it still being more valuable than it's ever been. Right. I mean, it's not sixty thousand dollars, but it's also not a thousand dollars. And I think that, you know, that trend is going to continue of, of, you know, parabolic rises in price, followed by corrections and consolidations. Um, and then we'll reach some level where there's, you know, a level of market stability around the asset. And we're just not there yet. You know, it's I know that people think that because it's been around for, you know, roughly a little over the you know 10 years that that makes it old. Um, but really, in technology terms, that is still very young. Um, and so I still think it's in a price discovery phase, and it, it's certainly still going through the machinations of mainstream adoption, which also include things like, you know, clear regulatory guidelines. And what we're seeing is really regulators trying to apply um, regulations that exist today to digital assets. And, you know, maybe that's the way, maybe, maybe that's not. Um, part of our goal as a company is to reach out to these regulators and show them some of the tooling that we've developed so that hopefully they can be better aware of the types of solutions that exist out there to address the problems that they may be struggling with through, you know, uh, purely through opinions and letters, right? Like we have developed actual technology that will help them with some of those challenges. And so I think that it's here to stay. I think that it's going to continue to long-term increase in value. And I really think that's going to be driven by further uh, innovations, developments, and product releases from companies like ours that help to make working with the technology easier and ensuring that um, the ways that organizations are issuing and managing tokens are sort of on the right side of regulations and the law. And as more of those tools come into play, um, I think you're going to see more and more adoption and you're going to see price growth to a point where it becomes more stable. And at that point, you know, when Bitcoin price sort of stabilizes, I think you'll see it start to get used a lot more for regular real world payments. I know a lot of people hold on to it today as like a store of value, but that's because of its volatility and general trend towards, towards you know, value appreciation. But at a certain point that will stabilize, at least that's the theory of, you know, Bitcoin's economic model. Um, and at that point, people should start to be able to use, you know, fractions of a Bitcoin, Satoshis, um, to transact, buy a coffee, go buy your groceries, that kind of thing. Um, it might be three, five years before that actually happens, right? But I think that will happen. And when that happens, the price will be higher than where it is today. And that's just my personal opinion and definitely not financial guidance or anything like that. Good. And thank you very much, Dan, today for giving us a good overview of not only the crypto market and the DeFi market, but also BCF. Um, thank you very much. Thanks for having me, Phil. Look forward to the next session. Please like our video and subscribe to our channel to help us get more cutting edge stock coverage to the market.